Hi, welcome to the story so far. I am your host, John Salvador, and this is, I think, episode number five. Today we're going to talk about property research in Australia. Property research in regional, non-bubble, no toward non-bubble, or the words I should say, non-bubble in regional Australia for positive cash flow, okay? I decided to break it down into macro and micro, so we can have a look at the overall part of the research and then we can zoom in into some of the details, okay? Now, before I uh, continue here, I have no affiliation with any other services, websites, and names that I'm going to mention. I just use, I just use them because they're very good, okay? So, um, um, just a disclaimer there if you like, okay? Now, what we're going to do is in the macroeconomic side of things, I pay, I, li I personally, I pay for the hotspotting reports by T Terry Ryder, okay? You can find them online, and uh, these are very useful. They're basically, uh, I'm going to go into some detail now, but they basically they break down uh, regional centers and areas and suburb suburbs for you, so you can really have a deeper dive into what's going on in, in each individual area before you actually jump in the car and go and look at some properties, okay? Hotspotting by Terry Ryder. Here are some of the things that I like about his reports. Here, for example, we have a regional report for Victoria with the top five regions that he includes. Reports also include commentary on what's happening in that particular regional center and what are the drivers and key things that are uh, influencing the market. It also includes a very handy highlight summary on some of the main things that affect that regional center and some of the strengths and weaknesses. Super important also is the fact that it includes a demographic breakdown as well as, as some economic commentary for the area. Again, equally important, it's giving me a population growth in, in the vacancy rates for each of the areas as well. Very powerful stuff. In the report, you will also find a suburb by suburb breakdown, including volume of sales, growth, and medium yields. Very useful information. And last but not least, the report will include all the infrastructure expenditure by the government and private industry in the area. Very powerful as well. There's another thing that I have here in the macro uh, economics or the macro aspects that affect a, a suburb, a regional area and your research is common sense. I, I call it common sense for lack of a better word but what that means to me is that I do have certain parameters that I think about when investing in a regional center. More than 50,000 um, uh, people in terms of population you got to have your Woolies, your car dealerships, your McDonald's, your KFCs and that sort of stuff. Because you think about it, if Woolies has invested in those areas and, and, and have invested millions of dollars in facilities and things like that, you're not going to go wrong with a tiny little house, okay? Uh, but they, obviously there's a lot more to that and, and you'll find in the, in, 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 in the reports. Now, going into the microeconomic area, this is now when you have selected a non bubble regional center to invest in. This is where you'll start kind of narrowing down your options, right? I would recommend opening a profile in realestate.com.au. Again, I have no affiliations with this, any of these guys. I just use them because the service is pretty good and very efficient. Open a profile in realestate.com.au. They have property alerts. What that means is that, for example, in my particular case, I select an area and then I go, I want a three bedroom home with 500 square meter lot um, between this certain price bracket, okay? And it will send me emails to my inbox with those, those details, so that's pretty powerful. And another one that I really like using is onthehouse.com.au, no affiliation with them whatsoever. But here you have a price rent and price history. The last couple of purchases I've done, I could see what the, the previous owner had paid for the property a couple of years back. The rental history, there was a tenant there in place, how much he was renting for and that sort of stuff. Even though I can ask the agents, but sometimes the agents lie. They don't know 
the information is not accurate, all of the above, you can just go in here and you'll have 99% of the properties that you're looking at will be registered in here. Okay. So I hope you find this one uh, useful. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in again. Include some comments below if you have any questions. Look, I'm happy to, again, just expand this if anyone's interested. Uh, hit the subscribe button, the like button, share with friends and family. I'm pretty sure someone out there is looking at the moment, uh, 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 researching how to break it all down. And I'm fine. I hope that you find this useful. Thank you.